Kendall Roy from Succession is a good example of an ambitious man. He wants to rise above his current condition, and he's obsessed. My father is a legend. I worship the ground he walks on. About taking over from his dad. But he is currently unfit to run his company. He's already a multimillionaire, at least. His goal would make him marginally richer, and he will inherit billions anyway. This is the day his reign ends. Although it's intense, if you look at the big picture, his ambition is limited. Let's see what a vast ambition looks like. When the venture capital firm Sequoia asks Sam Bachman fried if he could be the first trillionaire, he answered that one trillion would probably not be enough. He would need five in order to save the world, of course, not for himself. In this video, we're going to look at how to become a trillionaire. And there's so much we can learn from SBF. He failed and lost billions instead. He's a massive fraud, but he's our best case study. The first lesson is that the narrative is critical. It needs to be vague, but big enough to match your ambition. It almost sounds like a good pitch, but I call bullshit. SBF really nailed it. He was going to save the world and prevent pandemics. These types of narratives would carry all his ventures for profit maximization. Now let's look at his rise. His parents were Stanford professors. It's a good start in life. I was born lucky. And he studied maths and physics at MIT, a safe way to get a very good job. He started working as a trader at Jane Street, an arbitrage firm. They typically make fast transactions to take advantage of small discrepancies in the market. They make a few bips with minimum risk very often. That's a high paying job that can make you a millionaire. But being an employee is never going to make you a trillionaire. The top job. He spotted a much bigger arbitrage opportunity. Bitcoin was trading at very different prices in different markets. By buying it at a lower price on a crypto exchange in the US and selling it at a higher price in Japan, you could make over 10% every day. To take advantage of that, he started his hedge fund, Alameda Research. Like you can take the money. Alameda built an infrastructure to be able to do these trades at scale and were quite successful in the Japanese Bitcoin trade. The official version from SPF is that it made him a billionaire while still in his 20s, so maybe he was already at Logan level. But like all arbitrage opportunity, this one was diminishing very quickly and they had to start other trading strategies. The story is that he realized crypto trading is very inefficient and that there was an opportunity to improve that, so he decided to build his own exchange FTX. To understand the move and how it helps with the trillion goal, keep in mind that it's 2019. You have to look at the valuations and startup funding environment at that time. Hey, 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 buddy. Hedge funds are not doing that great. We ready to fuck or what? On the other hand, crypto projects and exchanges like Coinbase are getting funded at crazy valuations. Yeah, okay. We've started, so let's buy this fucking company. I'm pushing the bid to 120. There's a lot of money to be made just by raising funds. Now, of course, there's conflict of interest and moral issues by having an exchange linked to a hedge fund, even if they're officially different entities. I can promise you that I am spiritually. But if you want to be a trillionaire, you can't be bothered with that kind of details. And emotionally and ethically. So you just keep them together, raise funds. And morally behind whoever wins. And venture capitalists like Sequoia didn't care a lot. So SBF got a lot of money to launch FTX. Actually, people cared so little that in the case of FTX, the client money was just going straight to Alameda. The lesson here for becoming a trillionaire is that you can't rely on just one activity. You have limited years and you just need to switch and jump around to whatever will bring you there faster. You might never get another shot and it's the right thing to do. So now you're a VC-backed startup and the goal is to show investors that you can grow super fast and therefore raise more money. You can also launch a token, FTT in that case, and that allows you to print as much as you want and distribute it to users and investors. 
With the flows of the hedge fund, you can kickstart the volume on your exchange. You can also pretend you trade a lot more, but you eventually need some real clients. And therefore you need to differentiate. And FTX's differentiating factor was its spread were super tight compared to competitors. In fact, it turns out they were so tight that it was impossible that FTX was making money. They also had some crazy marketing tactics like naming a stadium, something that costs billions, but you can't really measure its impact in any way. And it worked. FTX showed that it was growing super fast. Investors were super happy and it was raising more and more funds. In 2021, it got $2 billion and was valued at 32 billion. The next lesson for wannabe trillionaires is that you have to make massive Good bets morning. and defy rules, conventions, morals. I have an announcement to make about wrongdoing at Waystar Royco in advance of the upcoming shareholder meeting. Keep saying that you will save the world and everyone will look past that. Wanted to do things, some good things. Do good things. At this stage, SBF was a multi-billionaire, but still a long way. So the quickest way to make money is to print it. And that's when you need to become a bank. And so he did. FTX started acting like a bank. So to recap, now you're a hedge fund, exchange and a bank. You can invest like a VC firm. You can bail out crypto lenders like BlockFi, Voyager. You get their assets, but also you're seen as a savior. And finally, you can lend to your own hedge fund. So having a, an unregulated bank is really a must to be a trillionaire. I want to become a bank. It creates a lot of conflict of interest. You would never be allowed if the industry was regulated. Oh, Bobby Axelrod wants to be a bank. There's a video about how Axel Axelrod from Britain tried to do that and the regulations he was facing, but crypto is not regulated, so let's make the most of it. Now you can take much bigger risks with the hedge fund that you still operate, even if you say you're not involved. If you win, that's great. If there are losses, you can bail it out. One very profitable strategy for Alameda was to front run its customers by acquiring tokens that were about to be listed on the exchange. But that's not enough. Instead of doing low risk but low profit arbitrage, they also taking big directional bets and they had massive losses. No problem, FTX bailed them out. As collateral, Alameda posted FTT tokens. This is the magic money printed by the FTX group. These are good times. L to the you need to stop this. L you can go on stage with Giselle Bunchen and some ex-presidents. It's important to keep always the same outfit because you're different. The rest can only dream of becoming billionaires, but you are going for the trillions. You also send lots of money to politicians. You say you will buy Goldman Sachs. You say you like regulation. You're the man, Mr. Roy. You're the man. People say you're the new Warren Buffett, the JP Morgan of our time. You're the central bank of crypto that's a very good place to become a trillionaire. Now, if we look at the assets of that central bank, that's also an exchange and a hedge fund, we see a lot of FTT tokens, as well as random small tokens and failed companies that you bailed out. It's fixable. It's funny how these fuck ups always make the bottom line look fatter. Clients don't care about what you're doing with their money as long as they can access it. We carved that shit like a pumpkin. VCs don't care about your profits as long as you grow. Huh. And again, this is not to become rich. You keep repeating the narrative. You are going to save the world. The challenge is if people start saying nasty things about you and then people start worrying about their money. What, what, what the fuck's going on? You've, you've been up my ass all night. Then they start withdrawing fast. And if they have doubts, they can sell your token. That makes the price crash. So. That's good. Uh, and are we still, we still good for the announcement? And the tokens are the assets you have against client liabilities. So your assets no longer match liabilities at your exchange that's also a bank. Well, fuck off. You're technically insolvent. Get the fuck out. Everybody rushes to withdraw. You have to sell what you can. Straight up! It's a death spiral. Fucking idiot. You try to sell. And you act like you're a fucking guy, like a decent guy. But it doesn't work. You're a piece of shit, man. Everyone realizes that you can't pay back 
and you are insolvent. You're a fucking prick. <laughs> you have been lying. Eventually, you have lost. Everyone here fucking hates you. Billions of dollars for many people. And you are no longer even a billionaire. You will probably go to jail. Did you ever think I could do it? You're not going to save the world. Do what? They appoint a new CEO that explain what you did and call you totally incompetent. You can keep tweeting that you're going to come back. You know, you're smart, you're good. But nobody really listens. But I, I just don't know. But eventually, I think you did better than Kendall and it was worth a try.